Hey game devs, I'm Robin and this is BitBirdie. Welcome to part 2 of the dash tutorial. In part 1, I went over the actual dash and this ghost effect, and in part 2, I'm going to show you how to make the dust trail and the dust burst. GitHub repos for both parts are in the description below, so if you want to follow along with me, feel free to clone or download the part 1 repo. Okay, so we're just going to start out right where we left off from part 1. The only difference is, I've added this dust.png, which is a sprite sheet for the dust animation. I've updated the part 1 repo to include the sprite as well, just in case you wanted to follow along. I also have this circle.png here to demonstrate what all the dust would look like without some fancy pixel art. So let's go into the dash scene and create a particle effect. Okay, let's rename this to dust trail. And let's add a process material. Let's also add the dust texture. So dust.png right here. Now it doesn't know that it's an animation yet, so we also have to add a canvas item material. Check particles animation to on, and we have to up this to five because we have five H frames and only one V frame. That's five columns and one row. Let's go all the way back up here. In time, I'm going to change this to 1.2. The lifetime is the amount of time that the particle is on screen for. I'm going to change this to 0 0.8. We want the explosiveness to be high but not completely one, or else there would only be one dust cloud in our trail. And then here, let's make this 0 0.7. So this is just going to randomize this lifetime a little bit so that they don't all disappear in the same order. Then we'll bring the gravity down to zero. Okay, so I want each particle's rotation to be a little bit random, but changing the randomness doesn't do anything until I change this to a different value. So let's do that and we'll change this to 0 0.15 so that it's just a little bit random. Let's go into the scale. So again, with the scale, if I bump up the randomness, nothing actually happens. I need to give it a value first. All right, so you can see that some of them are smaller and some of them are a little bit bigger. Okay, let's go into the color and give it a gradient. Now we want to start out normal and then become transparent over time. So we'll make this color white and then we'll have this be transparent. You'll see they're just fading out over their lifetime. And then let's make this a one shot so that the particle animation only plays once. And then let's go into our script. Just kidding, I actually forgot to open the animation tab here and set the speed to one so that we can actually see that sprite sheet animation. And now let's go into the script. Okay, so we've added a reference to our dust trail particles. And then in start dash, we're going to restart the particles to make sure that they start from the beginning of the animation and then we're gonna turn them on. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so the particles are showing up, but they're just following the player instead of actually leaving a trail behind the player. And they're also a little bit too high. They should be at our feet. So let's just fix these things. Go into drawing and local coordinates should be off. So that will mean that the particles will use global coordinates instead of local coordinates. So they won't follow along with the player. This will let each particle stay put where they spawned, which will be in a line behind the player. I also noticed that the Z index should be a bit lower because the particles were showing up in front of the player sprite when we want it to be behind the player sprite. Well, it's up to you, but I think it looks a little bit better when the dust is behind the player sprite. So to reposition the dust so that it's by the player's feet, let's go into the player scene, right click on dash and click editable children so that we can get into the dust trail and edit it while we're looking at the player. So select the dust trail and hold alt. And then you can drag this down without selecting anything else and we'll put it by the player's feet. Maybe a little bit right there. All right, let's see what that looks like. Okay, that looks way better. So there's one more thing um, that I want to adjust. I want the animation to stay on the first frame. So stay as an intact dust cloud for just a little bit longer. So to do that, we can add a speed curve to the particles animation. Let's go back to the dash scene. So go to the animation tab where we adjusted the speed to one and add a new curve texture. And then we can edit this curve. So the max value should be one. And then let's just drag this point down to here so that it, the speed will start at zero and then it'll go all the way up to one. So I believe the x-axis is tied to the lifetime. 
So it'll start at zero, and by the end of the particle's lifetime, it'll be at one. We also have to change the speed back to zero because it seems like it overrides the curve. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so you can see that the first frame of the animation stays on a little bit longer, and then the animation speeds up. Let's move on to the dust burst. So let's just make a copy of the dust trail. Rename it dust burst. And let's edit this to 14, the lifetime to 1.5. And you want to be really careful with the process material here. So this is a resource that's being shared between the dust burst and the dust trail. So if I were to change, say, this, this field to 1, it'll also change it for the dust trail. So I'm just going to change this back. See, it's the same. So to fix this, you want to right click the particles material and click make unique. This way, it's no longer sharing a resource. It has its own unique particles material. I can just show you that really quickly if we want to change this to one and yeah, so it stays 0 0.7 there. Okay, let's actually change this back to 0 0.7. Okay, I'm just going to go up here and turn one shot off so that we can see what we're working with. Let's go into emission shape and make this a sphere with a radius of six. So instead of uh, so instead of particles spawning at a point, it's gonna spawn in a sphere with a radius of six pixels. Let's give it a velocity. Okay, and then in direction we can control its spread and just make it a little bit closer together, so that instead of spreading out at a forty-five degree angle, it'll spread out at a thirty degree angle. And it's going to the right because the direction is just a vector with x equals 1 and y equals 0. The z doesn't really matter because we're just working in 2D. And then in the scale, we have the values from before, but I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger. 1.3. Okay, I think we're ready to go into our script. Well, first I will turn this back on, and then we'll go into our script. Okay, so we've added a reference to our dust burst particles right here. The way the dust burst is going to work is we need to kind of have the dust shoot out in a direction that's opposite to the direction that the player is dashing in. So we need to pass in the player's direction here. And then the way that we're going to change the direction of the dust burst is by changing its rotation. So we're going to take the direction that the player is moving in times it by negative one, which will give us the opposite direction, and then convert that to a rotation in degrees to plug into the dust burst rotation. So let me just show you what that direction looks like. If we print here the move direction, which is the thing we're going to pass into the dash, uh, to start dash here. Let's actually just do that now. So let's see what that looks like when we're running around. Right now it's zero, zero. When I move to the right, it's one, zero. X is one, Y is zero. When I'm moving directly downwards, y is 1, x is 0. So you have basic 8-directional movement like this. Okay, so say the player was dashing in the up left direction. That's going to be a vector of negative 1, negative 1. So if you times that by uh, negative 1, you'll actually get a vector 1, 1. So now we have the direction times negative one part of this. So what about the dot angle? Well, what that's going to do is measure the angle between zero and this vector right here. And this is going to result in pi over four or 45 degrees. And it's going to plug 45 into the dust burst rotation. And then after setting the rotation, we're doing the same thing as the dust trail particles. We're going to restart it so that the animation starts from the beginning, and then we're going to turn the particles on, basically. So let's see if it worked. Oh no, what's going on? <laughs> All right, we'll have to fix this. Okay, I realized that the problem was that I forgot to change this explosiveness value all the way up to one. So that's going to make all the particles spawn at once. Let's see if that fixed it. Cool. Okay, so this is the dust burst. Uh, I'm just going to show you one last thing. 
So I just want to show you that even if you don't want to make a dust sprite sheet like this, you can actually just have like a circle and it'll still look pretty decent. So let's put the circle into here and then we'll stop the animation. Oh, see this canvas item material was actually another shared resource be between the two. So when I turned off the particles animation in the dust burst, it also did the same thing for dust trail. So just keep that in mind whenever you're copying, pasting nodes. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, so even though these are all just like circles, it still kind of looks cool. Um, and it just means you don't really have to know art to make a decent looking effect. Here's the effect again with um, some tweaks to the scale properties. And I also added uh, more dust trail particles. Not bad. If you're watching this video, I assume that you already saw part one, so I'm not going to repeat the whole outro for you. But I just wanted to say thanks for watching, and if you have any suggestions for future tutorials, make sure to leave them in the comments below. I'll see you next time.